Hello students, welcome to Geology Classroom. This is Yael Mahesh, President Professor of Geology from Tara Government College, Sagar. In today's class, we are going to discuss about digestion of fluids. So let us know first of, first of all, uh, what are lipids? <coughs> lipids are heterogeneous group of water insoluble organic molecules. Uh, water insoluble means they are hydrophobic. They can be extracted from tissues by non-polar solvents. Generally, these lipids are found compartmentalized because of their insoluble nature. For example, uh, they are present in membranes. Associated lipids are droplets of triglycerol in adipocytes. In some uh, in some areas, they are associated with proteins. Also, uh, they are known as uh, lipoproteins, and uh, these lipoproteins are uh, helpful in transport of lipids. So now, let us know classification of uh, lipids. Lipids are uh, lipids are classified into three categories. In simple lipids, second one is compound lipids, and third one is aerial lipids. Examples for simple lipids are fats and oils. And in this uh, fats and oil, again, two subclasses are this simple fats and simple oils, and uh, mixed fats and mixed oils. And another category in simple lipids uh, is wax. In coming to the uh, classification of uh, compound lipids, compound lipids are classified into three, three subgroups. One is phospholipids, and in this phospholipids, uh, we have lecithins, phalins, and plasmalogens, and uh, sphingomyelin. Second category in uh, compound lipids are glycolipids, and uh, <clears throat> in this glycolipids, again, we have cerebrocytes and gangliosides. And third category uh, in compound lipids is sulfolipid. So in uh, all these three categories, phospholipids, glycolipids, and sulfolipids, lipids are bound to some other different group, hence they are called as compound lipids. So in phospholipids, they are bound to phosphate group. In glycolipids, they are bound to uh, Glyco molecules are carbohydrates, and in sulfolipids, they are bound to sulfur or sulfur chloride. And coming to the third category of lipids, terrier lipids. So these lipids are formed from the digestion or processing of lipids. Hence, uh, they are called as derived lipids. In this derived lipids, we have four categories. One is alcohols. Second one is fatty acids. Third one is sterols. And the fourth one is uh, isoprenoids. <clears throat> so all these four categories of uh, lipids, they will be derived from the lipids, hence they are called as uh, derived lipids. And in isoprenoids, again, we have terpenoids and carotenoids. <clears throat> and coming to the fatty acids, fatty acids are the uh, derived lipids. They are derived from the lipids. So in these fatty acids, again, two categories of fatty acids are present. One is a straight chain fatty acids, and second group uh, is cyclic fatty acids. And in straight chain fatty acids, we have saturated fatty acids, and another group is unsaturated fatty acids. And in unsaturated fatty acids, again, we have monounsaturated fatty acids, and another group is polyunsaturated fatty acids. And in polyunsaturated fatty acids, we have omega-3 fatty acids, and another one is uh, omega-6 fatty acids. And in next category, cyclic fatty acids, we have two categories in this thing. Uh, prostaglandins uh, one subcategory and uh, thromboxanes is the another subcategory. These two are examples for cyclic fatty acids. And apart from this thing, uh, fatty acids can be uh, classified into two groups. Uh, one is cis fatty acids, another one is trans fatty acids also. So 
So coming to the uh, classification of lipids based on the uh, presence or location, uh, when the lipids are present in food, uh, they will give us <clears throat> energy. They are also essential in the, uh, they, are, uh, they act as nutrients and uh, they give flavor to food also. And uh, in body, these lipids, they are present in adipose tissues and uh, as well as they are also present in cell membranes also. So coming to the functions of lipids, uh, lipids are major sources of uh, energy in the body. So for our daily functioning of our body, we require energy and energy will be produced from carbohydrates as well as lipids, but lipids are the major source of energy for our body. And these lipids, they also provide a hydrophobic barrier that permits partitioning of the aqueous contents of cells and subcellular structures. We know that uh, in our bodies, we have uh, many number of uh, cells, so, and all these cells, they are uh, acting as a barrier which separates both the aqueous contents uh, inside and outside of the cells. In this way, uh, the lipids uh, which are present in the plasma membrane, they are acting as a hydrophobic barrier so that separates the, both the aqueous contents uh, inside and outside of these uh, uh, plasma membrane cells. So in the fat soluble vitamins uh, uh, have regulatory or coenzyme functions. So some vitamins uh, are called as fat soluble as they are soluble in fats. So these fat soluble vitamins they have very very important functions in our body. They regulate many biological activities, biochemical reactions, and they also act as coenzymes in many biological activities. In prostaglandins and steroid hormones also is category of uh, lipids and these uh, prostaglandins and steroid hormones they play a major role in maintaining our body. So these are the functions of the and coming to the food sources of fats. So we can get food, uh, we can get fats from both animal food and plant food. So uh, the fats present in animal food are called as animal fats. So meat fat uh, and dairy fats are dairy products like uh, cream, butter, cheese, milk and egg yolk. So these uh, are the three products that give uh, fat from uh, animal origin. <laughs> Next category is uh, plant fats. Uh, plant fats uh, are mono unsaturated uh, fats and uh, poly unsaturated fatty acids are present in plant fats and vegetable oils like uh, sunflower and corn flour, corn flour oil and uh, uh, soya bean oil, cotton seed and olive oils. All these oils are considered as plant. So characteristics of uh, food fat sources. So the uh, visible fat, uh, butter, margarine, a lot of oils and dressing and uh, sheltening fat meat, all these are considered as visible fat. And uh, some are invisible fat materials are there like cheese, cream portion of homogenized milk and egg yolk, and nuts, seeds and olives. They are having invisible fat. And uh, coming to the sources of lipids and uh, relative proportion of fatty acids in lipids. So in this thing, uh, <clears throat> uh, the saturated and trans trans fats are there. These two are considered as unhealthy fats. Saturated fats and trans fats are considered as unhealthy fats. And uh, these unhealthy fats, that means the saturated fats and trans fats, they increase cardiovascular disease rate. Saturated, fat, uh, saturated fats are available in red meat, whole milk, dairy products such cheese, butter, vegetable oils, coconut oil, palm oil, and fatty meat. So all these products, they will contain saturated fats. And coming to trans fats, they are available in baked food, candies, chips, processed and fried foods, 
partially hydrogenated oils and reheated oils all these uh, materials they will have trans fats and both these two categories of uh, fats are not good for health and coming to another category <coughs> healthy fats and these are very important and very essential for our organ functioning so under healthy fat we can see that uh, uh, mono unsaturated fatty acids and poly unsaturated fatty acids and poly unsaturated fatty acids are very very essential for our health, uh, our health. and uh, poly unsaturated fatty acids uh, there are two types of poly unsaturated fatty acids are there one is omega 3 and another one is omega 6 so coming to mono unsaturated fatty acids these are not non essential these are non-essential fatty acids why because our body can synthesize these fatty acids canola oil peanut oil olive oil almonds and hazelnuts pumpkin seeds and avocados all these are having non-essential fatty acids even though we do not consume these materials these products our body can synthesize the uh, non-essential mono unsaturated fatty acids in our body Whereas coming to this polyunsaturated fatty acids, this polyunsaturated fatty acids, uh, omega-3 is one category. Omega-3 is available in flax seed oil, walnuts, fatty fish, salad, and cooking oil, salad dressing, shortening, canola oil, and uh, soya bean oil. So all these oils and materials are products, they will contain omega-3 fatty acids. And another group uh, of essential uh, poly unsaturated fatty acids is omega-6. Omega-6 is available in vegetable oils, corn oil, sesame oil, beet germ oil, and sunflower seeds and walnuts. All these materials will have omega-6 fatty acids. So uh, consuming these uh, poly unsaturated fatty acids is very, very important because the fatty acids available from these products are not synthesized by our body hence we have to we must consume these products in order to get these fatty acids and uh, uh, what are the uses of these uh, poly and saturated fatty acids let us see omega-3 this omega-3 fatty acid it reduces blood clotting tendency and it reduces uh, blood pressure, it reduces mortality for cardiovascular disease. So cardiovascular diseases will be prevented uh, with the help of this omega-3 fatty acid. Another one, omega-6 fatty acid, this is also called as linoleic acid. Linoleic acid, uh, sorry, linoleic acid. Uh, we have to consume uh, this uh, linoleic acid uh, three to six grams per day and sources of this thing as we have already seen vegetable oil sweet jam sunflower peanuts almonds avocados eggs uh, are the sources of omega-6 fatty acid functions of these omega-6 fatty acid are structure and function of cellular and subcellular membranes so it is very very important in the formation of uh, cellular and subcellular membranes it lowers the blood cholesterol, a bad cholesterol will be decreased with the help of this omega-6 fatty acid and it also prevents heart diseases. Deficiency of this omega-6 fatty acid leads to scaly skin or hair loss and impaired wound healing. Next, uh, coming to the sources of dietary cholesterol. So, uh, richest cholesterol foods are uh, egg yolk, fish rolls, mayonnaise and shellfish and moderate cholesterol is available in uh, fat on meat, duck, goose, uh, whole milk, cream, ice cream, cheese, butter, cakes, biscuits and pastries. And uh, cholesterol is poor in fish, fish canned in vegetable oil, very lean meat, poultry without skin, skimmed milk, low fat yogurt, cottage cheese. And cholesterol free foods are all vegetables, vegetable oils, fruits, especially avocados and olives, nuts, rice, egg white, and sugar. All these are cholesterol free. So 
products. Other nutrients that decrease uh, decrease cholesterol are uh, choline, nocital, vanadium, zinc, dietary fiber, and phytosterol. All these uh, decrease the cholesterol in our body. Coming to the digestion of dietary lipids. So usually adults uh, will consume 60 to 80 grams of lipids per day and more than 90% uh, uh, of these lipids are uh, normally they are triacylglycerols. A remaining 10% consists of cholesterol alcohol, or uh, cholesterol esters, phospholipids and unesterified fatty acids or free fatty acids. And uh, digestion of lipids begins uh, in stomach. Uh, digestion of lipids does not uh, start in mouth as uh, uh, there are no enzymes or materials uh, released into the mouth uh, that required for the digestion of lipids. Hence, uh, digestion of lipids starts in the stomach only. So, lingual lipase originated from the glands at the back of the tongue. And the gastric lipase, uh, uh, it will be secreted by the gastric mucosa. So both these are uh, acid-stable lipases, and uh, they require a pH of 4 to 8 for their normal uh, functioning or optimum functioning. So they act on triglycerols with short and medium-length fatty acids uh, uh, below 12 carbon chain uh, fatty acids. And importance is uh, 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 they are very, very uh, useful in neonates uh, to digest milk fat and uh, cystic fibrosis. Individuals with pancreatic insufficiency uh, lack pancreatic lipase. So in those persons, uh, these uh, lingual lipase and gastric lipase only are helpful in digesting milk fat in stomach. And in small intestine, so, uh, usually the uh, digestion of lipids in stomach is very, very less. Uh, mostly, digestion of lipids, uh, most part of the lipids are uh, digested in small intestine only. And here in the small intestine, emulsification of lipids takes place. So, this emulsification process, it increases the surface area of hydrophobic lipid droplets. So that uh, the digestive enzymes can work at the interface of the droplets and the surrounding aqueous solution can act effectively. So in the, uh, in the emulsification of these lipid foods, uh, bile salts are very, very useful. So these bile salts are, they are, they are the derivatives of cholesterols and these bile salts are uh, prepared or made in liver and they are stored in gallbladder and along with uh, glycine and taurine, they are stored in gallbladder. So mechanical mixing due to peristalsis happens in the small intestine. So <clears throat> coming to the bile acids, the end products of cholesterol utilization are the bile acids. Uh, they are synthesized in the liver. The primary bile acids in human bile are no dioxifolic acid, uh, it occupies 45%, and uh, folic acid, it accounts uh, uh, for 31% of uh, bile acid. And secondary bile acids are deoxycholate uh, from folate and uh, lithocholate from chenodeoxycholate. And uh, conjugation with glycine and taurine before the execution into the bile yield. So these uh, bile acids, they are uh, uh, combining with the glycine to form glycopolic acid and they are combining with taurine to form tarocholic uh, acid. So when these are uh, bound to sodium ions, so sodium glycopolate, sodium tarocholate is produced and these are considered as bile salts. So coming to the emulsification of fat, how it is done, see uh, here in this diagram, the fat material or the fat food, it is very big in size, but the lipase enzymes, uh, they are very small and uh, these lipase enzymes, if the fat is not broken down into pieces, they cannot properly digest the fat. 
so that uh, in this process what's happening emulsification is coming to rescue this crop so in the small intestine mixing uh, of in the gut uh, of bile salts will act on this fat material and they will break this fat material into small small pieces and uh, total food in the small intestine or especially in duodenum it is converted into a emulsion like structure so that uh, this process is called as emulsification so due to the emulsification of this fat materials big fat uh, food materials are converted into small droplet like materials so this increases the surface area of this fat materials when the surface area of the fat material is increased uh, it will be very easy for the lipase enzyme to digest the fat materials so in this way emulsification of uh, fats is achieved by the bile salts that are present in the bile so here in the digestion of fat uh, fat materials uh, juice bile juice secreted by the liver plays very very important role even though the bile juice uh, secreted by the liver is not having any enzymes usually to digest the food materials the enzymes are very helpful but here in the <clears throat> bile juice any enzyme is not present so it is a divide of enzymes but it is having a bile salts and these bile salts uh, bile salts they are emulsifying the fat materials so that big fat materials are broken down into small pieces and the total food mixture is converted into a emulsion like so when the fats are broken down into small pieces and uh, uh, the food is converted into a emulsion like an emulsion like structure then uh, that situation becomes easy for the digestion of fats uh, by the lipase enzyme so in this way in the second step once the emulsification of fats is uh, done the next digestion of fats takes place so during this digestion of fats uh, uh, the lipase enzymes they will act on these uh, emulsified fats and they continue their activity as a result of this thing the fat materials they will be broken down into free fatty acids ffa or mono acyl glycerols and micelles uh, will be formed so all these micelles uh, they will be having this uh, fat soluble vitamins like a d e k and uh, free fatty acids mono acyl glycerols mag and all these things they will form into small ball like as they are called as micelles so once the micelles is uh, are formed uh, it is uh, understood that uh, digestion of fats is finished and these micelles will be absorbed into this uh, uh, microvilli especially in the microvilli each microvilli will have a lacteal in the middle of uh, uh, that uh, microvilli all these things will be absorbed into this lacteal so that makes the absorption of the digested fat material so lipids are uh, these fats and oils uh, they are insoluble in water hydrophobic and uh, the lipids tend to coalesce into larger droplets uh, which reduce the surface area of our digestion the <coughs> hydrophobic lipid uh, is uh, only accessible to the water soluble lipases at the interface uh, between lipid and water to increase the access uh, uh, that means to increase the surface area uh, for the digestion and rate of lipid digestion the lipid droplet must be broken up uh, that will be done by uh, emulsification process bile salts uh, secreted from the liver via gall bladder and uh, these bile salts they have molecules with a combination of hydrophobic and uh, hydrophilic regions and bile salts uh, break up the lipid droplet into many smaller droplets thereby increasing the surface area of lipid water at next uh, degradation of uh, lipids by pancreatic enzymes so uh, 
try as a glycerol degradation. So mostly our uh, food um, fats are in the form of triacyl glycerols. So in this triacyl glycerols, uh, one glycerol molecule is bound to three fatty acids. So they are called as triacyl glycerols. So pancreatic lipase. This triacyl glycerol molecules are very large molecules. Uh, they cannot be taken up efficiently by the mucosal cells of the intestinal villi. So our body or our intestine cannot absorb them uh, in as it is form. Why? Because triacyl glycerols are big molecules, so that they have to be broken down into small pieces. So remove fatty acids at C1 and the C3. So this uh, uh, glycerol molecule is having three carbons. To so three carbons, three fatty acids are attached. So from first carbon and from third carbon, two fatty acids will be removed. So that what's happening as a result of triglycerides digestion, two free fatty acids are being formed and one fatty acid is attached to glycerol. So that is called as monoacyl glycerol. So in this way, when one triglyceride is digested by the action of pancreatic lipase enzyme, two free fatty acids will be formed and one monoglyceride and monoacyl glycerol will be formed. So apart from this pancreatic lipase enzyme, colipase enzyme also will be there. It also will be secreted by the pancreas. And uh, this colipase enzyme binds to pancreatic lipase uh, at a ratio of 1 to 1. So uh, this anchor site lipid, uh, lipid aqueous interface, this colipase enzyme anchor site uh, lipid aqueous interface, so that uh, <coughs> so, uh, actually colipase will be secreted in pro-lipase, uh, pro-colipase form. This pro-colipase uh, is in inactive form. Uh, the trypsin enzyme uh, will activate this pro-colipase into colipase. Once colipase is formed, uh, this uh, anchors the uh, lipid aqueous interface uh, to a pancreatic lipase. And the cholesterol ester degradation. So mostly in free form, uh, 10 to 15 percent uh, will be in esterified form, and uh, these cholesterol esters they are hydrolyzed by pancreatic cholesterol ester hydrolase enzyme. This pancreatic cholesterol ester hydrolase enzyme it is also called as cholesterol esterase enzyme, and the products are uh, cholesterol and free fatty acids. So as a result of these cholesterol esters are digested, finally, uh, we will get cholesterol and free fatty acids. This cholesterol, uh, cholesterol esterase enzyme activity greatly increased in the presence of bile salts. So when bile salts are present, the cholesterol esterase enzyme activity will be increased to a greater extent. So the chemical reaction of this uh, activity is uh, this. Cholesterol esters, uh, they are uh, broken down into fatty acids and cholesterol in the presence of pancreatic cholesterol ester hydrolase enzyme or cholesterol esterase enzyme. And phospholipids degradation and phospholipids also will be there in our food and how these phospholipids are degraded or digested, let us see. Phospholipids are hydrolyzed by phospholipase A2 enzyme. Phospholipase A2 enzyme is helpful in digesting the phospholipids. Pancreatic juice is rich in phospholipase A2 enzyme, and this phospholipase A2 enzyme also will be secreted initially in an inactive form. And this inactive or pro phospholipase A2 enzyme will be activated by trypsin enzyme. And the activity of this phospholipase lipase A2 enzyme requires bile salts for optimum activity. 
So products are uh, lysopropospolipid and uh, free fatty acid. So phospholipids will be broken down into lysopospolipid and free fatty acids. Uh, we will be of this phospholipase A2 enzyme. And uh, lysopospolipase enzyme removes another fatty acid and the product is uh, glyceryl phosphoryl base. This glyceryl phosphoryl base may be excreted in feces, either degraded or absorbed. So the uh, chemical reactions uh, of this uh, phospholipid degradation or digestion can be shown as like this. Uh, Phosphatidylcholine, the help of phospholipase A2 enzyme is broken down into phospholipid plus Lysophosphatidylcholine, and this lysophosphatidylcholine, with the help of lysophospholipase enzyme, uh, is broken down into fatty acid and glycerol phosphoride. And uh, coming to the regulation of lipid digestion, how this lipid digestion is controlled? Uh, the control of uh, uh, lipid digestion will be hormonal control. And two hormones are helpful in uh, controlling this uh, lipid digestion. They are cholecystokinin and another one is secretin. Let us see about the first hormone that controls the lipid digestion, that is cholecystokinin. Earlier, it was also called as pancreogymin. So this uh, cholecystokinin is a small peptide hormone and it will be produced by mucosal cells of jejunum and lower duodenum and it is secreted uh, this cholecystokinin will be secreted in response to presence of lipids and partially digested means uh, entering the upper small intestine so when this uh, uh, partially digested proteinaceous food and uh, lipid food when it enters into the upper small intestine or duodenum that entry of that food material uh, triggers the mucosal cells of the jejunum to secrete this cholecystokinin enzyme. So whenever there is an entry of uh, lipid protein into the small intestine or duodenum, then only uh, cholecystokinin will be released. And uh, mode of action of this cholecystokinin hormone uh, this hormone acts on gallbladder, causing contraction and release of bile. So, whenever the liquid food and partially digested protein food enters the duodenum, uh, jejunal wall secretes cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin then goes on works on gallbladder walls to cause contractions in the walls of gallbladder. The contractions in the wall of gallbladder. Uh, causes the release of bile juice and the bile juice as we have already seen it is having bile salts sodium glycopolate and sodium tarocolate they are very very important in uh, uh, what uh, emulsifying these uh, lipids so this uh, acts on uh, exocrine cells of pancreas this uh, polycystokine hormone also acts on exocrine cells of pancreas and uh, aids the release of digestive enzymes. So in this way, pancreatic enzymes also will be released uh, in response to this cholecystokinin hormone. And uh, this hormone decreases the gastric motility resulting in slower release of gastric contents into the small intestine. And another hormone that controls the digestion of lipids is secretin hormone. The secretin hormone also, it is also a small peptide hormone. It is also produced by intestinal cells and it is also secreted in response to the entry of food. But here the triggering thing is lower pH. Usually the food coming from the uh, stomach will have lower pH value. Why? Because it is uh, having acid in it. So that lower pH value of uh, food and when enters into the duodenum, that thing uh, triggers the secretion of secretin uh, this in the wall. And mode of action of secretin hormone. 
So this uh, secreting hormone acts on pancreas and liver, resulting in the release of watery solution rich in bicarbonate that helps in neutralization of BH of the intestinal contents. So as the food coming from small intestine is having a, a lower pH value, to decrease that lower pH value, the food must uh, uh, react with the uh, uh, base materials. So, so then uh, in response to this uh, acid food uh, entry, the secretin will be released, but secretin is released in large quantities. Uh, the bile juice and the pancreatic juice, uh, they will be having watery uh, solution rich uh, uh, juices. Uh, that means a low, lower quantity of enzymes will be there, more water content will be there in those uh, juices. That means uh, pancreatic juice and uh, bile juice. So this maintains the appropriate pH for enzymatic digestion by pancreatic enzyme. So chyma is a semi-fluid mass of partially digested food that passes from stomach into the septuagenum. It's called as chyme. This chyme will be in acid uh, condition. The uh, acid condition chyme entry triggers the small intestine to release secretin. And the secretin acts on uh, liver and pancreas to release uh, more watery content uh, juice and uh, this reduces uh, this increases the pH value and uh, it creates a optimum environment uh, uh, that suitable for the action of this pancreatic engine so in this way with the help of the secretin and uh, uh, pancreogenin hormones uh, uh, all the juices are uh, released in appropriate times in appropriate quantities and uh, with the help of enzymes and with the help of bile juices or bile salts, the lipids are digested. So this is about the uh, digestion of uh, lipids. Uh, in next class we will meet uh, with another topic. Uh, thank you.